HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Friends of Lake Whitehall hosted a Woodville History Exhibit at the Historical Society as part of the Hopkinton 300th Anniversary Celebration. Hiller's softball picked up another couple of wins in the TVL and Abraham Lincoln was the topic of discussion at the Hopkinton Library. But first, Memorial Day festivities occurred in Hopkinton, and a large turnout was on hand to honor our nation's veterans. Memorial Day services took place in Hopkinton. The ceremonies started at the Evergreen Cemetery, followed by the Veteran Memorial locations on Mayhew Street. Here are some sights and sounds from throughout the day. Memorial Day should and ought to have a significant meaning for all Americans. Regardless of your politics or religious beliefs, one certainly has to be respectful and admiring of those who are willing to die for a cause they believe in. Maybe not a popular cause or even a belief held by the majority, but a personal conviction held by that individual. This is the time in the occasion we pause to become conscious of our past and acknowledge the men and women who gave their lives defending our country. A country committed to battle the evil in this world. A country founded under the principles of basic human rights. And a country where each grave will fall in soldier may also represent the family and the children that never were. After the services at the memorial locations, the parade led by the American Legion marched over to the town common to honor those who have served in the United States Armed Forces. Bless them and their families for the selfish acts they performed for us in our time of need and grant us all peace, both as individuals and as a world community. But then when we ask the person who, that said this is not Hopkinton, what is Hopkinton? They really couldn't say, but they would say, but this is not it. Well, I believe that this is it. This is Hopkinton. Hopkinton is more than an old building, a new building, a library, a town hall, center school, or even the Boston Marathon start. start. It's our community spirit. About 30 years or so ago, my sister who worked here said to me, John, do you want to see the real Hopkinton? I said, what, for the race? She said, no, the real Hopkinton. I'll pick you up at 9.30 on Memorial Day. She brought me here and I saw this. I saw all of you. I felt all of you. I was sucked into the feeling of community and family. This is Hopkinton. This is the spirit of the fabric of our town and our country. Like many have said before, we could all be someplace else on this long holiday weekend, sleeping late, fishing, enjoying brunch, However, it is so important and wonderful that we all continue to gather this one day to show our appreciation for those who fought and those who made the ultimate sacrifice. And that no matter how wealthy or technologically advanced our world becomes, 
There will always be the need for some to suffer grievously as individuals so that collectively the rest can live in safety and security. This realization makes us appropriately somber and calls for reflection on days like this. However, at the same time, we must recognize that these sacrifices are even more tragic if we fail to fulfill our end of the bargain. Most of us will only briefly pass through history and will leave little mark. Those covered today by American flags made our history. The story of our nation is genuinely written with their blood. We owe them more. Our obligation is to take this nation forward from where they left it, to remain true to the principles they fought for and to strive to do our part to make this a country that we continue to be proud of. Each of us must do something in our own way to honor these people by making our society stronger and ever more perfect. It was terrific to see such a huge turnout at the Town Common to honor those who have sacrificed for our country. Book author William Martin was recently at the Hockington Public Library to talk about his book, The Lincoln Letter. He talked about the life of Abraham Lincoln and what motivated him to write about the nation's 16th president. And take a good look at this face. This is January of 1861. He has just won the presidential election. Secession has immediately begun, begun as a result of that. Lincoln, as uh, you, you know, had run on a ticket which stated that slavery would not be allowed to reach into the new territories in the West. Can you uh, talk about what got you into this research and influenced the book? Well, for the longest time I'd wanted to write a novel about Abraham Lincoln. Uh, and my editor had wanted me to write a novel about the Emancipation Proclamation. And uh, I'd also wanted to do one about the Civil War. The, the, that followed the life of some individual through the war. And I put all those things together, and this is the book that emerged, finally. And uh, the research was great fun, visiting all the battlefields, and reading newspapers from the period, and so forth. It's the most, um, uh, the, the research is always fun, but in this book it was particularly enjoyable. Now, how long did it take you to do all the research for this book? Well. I usually do some research and then I start writing and figure out what I need to know and then I go back and do the research. So the whole process takes a couple of years. There's a writer who has described it as a year of research, a year of writing, and a year of selling. And my, my process is a little bit different from that, but, but not a lot. You, you, you really uh, end up with... Um, the, a requirement that you, you learn an enormous amount. You basically get a graduate education in a new subject every time you write one of these novels. And I did in the Civil War and the Emancipation Proclamation. And uh, now, do you have any other projects in the works currently? I'm writing a book now called The Motherlode about the California Gold Rush, which is the uh, central event in the 19th century aside from the Civil War and it will, it will basically remake America and create the Golden State, which becomes the 12th largest economy in the world, which is what it is today. So that should be a pretty good book. Be out, be, it'll be out sometime in 2016. Certainly now, where, where can people find out more information about you? Is there a website? Yes, uh, williammartinbooks.com. And I usually try to keep it up to date so you'll You'll know where to come and hear my lectures or when the next book is coming out or you can click a link to Facebook and go there and see whatever I'm posting and ruminating upon, which is usually historical related material on the, the author page. You can see the full William Martin presentation airing soon right here on HCAM. We are going to take a short time out on HCAM News. Coming up next, we will get you up to date with Hiller's softball We'll take you inside the history of Woodville, and Courtney will have our HCAM Insider to let you know what's ahead on the HCAM channels. A lot more HCAM news on the way. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com.
and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Hello, I am Marie Smith, and I am the chairperson of the Hopkinton Women's Club Community Register and Telephone Directory. We hope you have found our little book to be a helpful resource in the past. We are beginning work on the 2016 edition and we need your help. Every household in Hopkinton receives one of these for free and we want to make sure you are included. Our residential listings are based on the information we get from Verizon. If you have switched to a different provider, such as Comcast, we may not have your number. If you do not have a landline, we definitely won't have your number. Or maybe you prefer your cell number in our directory. So please take a minute and help us make the directory accurate and useful for everybody. Take a look at the Hopkinton phone book that you have and make any corrections in it. Or if you are new to town, please send us an email before June 30th. We would love to hear from you. Thank you. Welcome back to HCAM News. As part of the Hopkinton 300th anniversary celebration, the Friends of Lake Whitehall recently hosted a Woodville history exhibit at the Historical Society. Gail Clifford and Steve Warren were kind enough to talk to me about the exhibit and give some interesting history about the historical district. We have an exhibition of the history of the village of Woodville, which is the western part of Hopkinton and a uh, history of Lake Whitehall covering everything from the 1600s on right up to just about the present. Uh, we have exhibits, we have posters that we've put together, we have a lot of old photographs, we have uh, artifacts, we have a fellow who's been digging a little bit in, in people's backyard dumps from the 1800s, finding all kinds of bottles and things like that. We have uh, a lot of people who have allowed me to scan old postcards and photographs from their family history uh, of growing up in Woodville. We have people here who've lived in Woodville all their life and uh, we're just covering everything. We're covering mostly the 1800s because that was the big industrial time for Woodville. There were a lot of people in Woodville at the time. There were big factories employing a lot of people. We had farms, we had, uh, let's see, we had one shoe factory, we had, which I've never found too much information on a piano factory. We had a last factory, we had a cotton mill, um, and the carriage factory, the big carriage factory. We had one fire down here in Woodville that wiped out quite a bit, and the other, problem in Woodville for the industries was the takeover of Lake Whitehall as a source of water for Boston. This happened in the 1890s and some of the factories had to come down because of pollution and new factories sprang up but it never got back to the heyday of the 1800s. But it's still, it's a community apart within Hopkinton but it's still a part of Hopkinton. Many of the families that stayed here over the years, uh, including the Wood family, which was the most prominent, uh, they were offices, selectmen, et cetera, for the town, starting with the first John Wood who came in 1714 maybe, and he was one of the first selectmen that uh, was appointed in 1724 when they actually got the government going. And his partner in, in the land business, lumber business that he had, was the first treasurer of the town of Hockington. And ever since then, right down to Herman Latta, we've had selectmen. Herman Latta was a selectman for 30 years. And then of course we've had, in, in the more recent present, we've had Mary Pratt, we've had Muriel Kramer, for example. So. Um, there's a lot of information out there. We talk about the cemetery, we talk about the library that probably a lot of people don't even know was in Hopkinton, I mean in Woodville. Um, we talk about the fire engine company. We had a hand pumper called the John Hopkins that won a major muster 
in Worcester in I think it was 1858. I have a whole Boston Globe article on that. And then on the lake, we have um, some conjectures on the old Connecticut path, which went by the lake, either to the north or the south, depending on who you read. Um, we talk about the lake today, all the different aspects of the lake, from fishing and boating to uh, wildlife and trails. And um, the other thing, too, that's very interesting is um, back in the early 1900s to about 1928 or so, postcards were the texting of the day. And we have a display of many, many, many of the postcards. There's probably 100 postcards of just the lake and uh, some other postcards that were made of some of the village scenes and some of the carriage factories and uh, shoe factories. And so it's really an exhibit. There's no talk. It's just a lot of fun, a lot of information about Woodville. Hi, my name is Steve Warren. I'm currently acting as the president of the Friends of Whitehall. And um, it was pretty much our group that was the catalyst to this afternoon's event. Um, we talked about it back in the fall, knowing that the um, 300th was coming up, and we thought that if we did a little special thing up here, we'd um, kind of treat that area of the town. Um, Whitehall is pretty much the major landowner in town. The Whitehall section um, is contiguous with uh, the State Park and Wood Street. It goes out to spring and pond um, in winter. And back in the day, it was a recreation point. Uh, people traveled from the city to come out to the lake. It's since become a very popular fishing area. So it is a highlight of the Woodville area and um, hopefully today's uh, um, presentation will bring a lot to light that people didn't know. Um, Gail and Margaret took the uh, charge and organized the group and did the research and uh, quite pleased with the outcome. And um, again, we just hope that everybody comes, go, goes away with a little better understanding of Whitehall. Playoff time is almost here. The Hillers softball team has already clinched a spot in the postseason, but has a chance to go undefeated in the TVL. Recently on HCAM, you got to see the Hillers pick up two more league wins against Millis and Medway. For those of you that missed it, here are the highlights along with head coach Dennis Baker Jr. talking about the season so far. On Monday, May 11th, the Hillers softball squad welcomed in Millis. The Hillers offense wasn't so welcoming to the Millis pitching staff. Potential bunt attempt. And this is hit in the air to shallow right field. Running in, not able to get there. In time is Ginden. One run scores, two runs will score. So Katewell Zell advances the second on the throw in. It's a two RBI hit. Doubles and two triples and a home run. This is on the ground, first base side. It is gloved by the first baseman. She'll step on a bag, but the run will score as Kayla Sullivan comes around on the RBI sacrifice ground out. It's three to nothing Hillers. Malowitz to the set. This is hit. A liner in a center field. That'll drop down and another Hillers run will score. Those were the four runs in the bottom of the first. The Hillers added two more in the second and two more in the third to make it eight to nothing. The game was broken wide open in the fourth. Line deals. And this is a liner and that'll drop into left field for a hit. The run will be waved around. The throw will not be in time. It's nine to nothing Hillers. To the set. And there's a strike. Rabley thought about taking off. She's caught in a bit of a pickle. The throw to first is going to be thrown home, but not before Jenna Bogan comes around to score. So the diversion works. Line to the set. Liner shot into center field, drops in and a run will score. 11-0 Hillers. A 12-0 Mercy victory. The game lasted five plus innings before the 12th run came around. Hillers 12 and one on the season. Uh, one of the concerns as a coach, especially after games like the Bellingham game last week, and not only the only the Bellingham game, we had a tough week um, with three close games. You worry about letdowns. 
Uh, and we talked about the girls not letting that happen today, you know, um, not finding ourselves in a close game in the fourth or fifth inning, taking care of business. We, we challenged the girls to really just play against themselves. Don't worry about what the other team is doing. If we show up and we play our game, this is what should happen against a team like that. Hillers softball taking on Medway. The Hillers led 6-0 heading into the bottom of the fourth after it would be a lot more of a lead. That does not mean a relief pitcher isn't coming in soon. And that is ball four. That'll walk in a run. Ingstrom comes around to score. It's a 7 0 Hopkinton lead. Higgins delivers. This is hit in the air towards the fence in left field. Back towards the fence. And it is off the glove. And that is going to be a home run, a grand slam. Kate Will Zell goes yard and clears the bases, a grand slam home run. It's 11 0 Hopkinton, with Jenna Bogan at the plate, still no outs. And this is hit in the air to right field and that's gone. A solo shot for Jenna Bogan and it's a home run derby for the Hillers. The cue delivers. And this is a slicer up the middle of the infield. That gets through, Hume will score. It's 13-0 Hillers with bases loaded. To the set. And a slicer in a right field, that drops in. One run in to score and the bases stay loaded. And deals on the ground, past the, die, the glove of the third baseman and another run around to score. Hillers. McHugh delivers. Hit in the air towards left field and it is caught. Runner will tag and score. Yes. RBI sacrifice fly out for Will Sell. Holly Mitchell in the score of the 16 Hillers run. The Hillers improve to 13 and one as they get the 16 to nothing five inning mercy victory Juliet Hume pitches a no-hitter. Kate Wellzell goes three for three with a grand slam, seven RBIs, and three runs. I have to ask, uh, obviously Alyssa Cargill left this season. Juliet Hume took over the starting role, and she's been extremely dominant. I know you expected that she was going to be good, but did you expect her to be this good? It's hard to expect anybody to be this good, especially seniors. Um, you know, in theory, seniors are the oldest. Uh, they're... they're probably the strongest, they should be the best players, but in this spring sport, it, it can be um, dicey sometimes. College is on the horizon, the weather is nice, graduation is coming, so there have been times in the past where Coach Soderberg and I have had a lot of seniors on a team, and we really felt that we didn't live up to our potential, so although you assume that they're going to play well, until you see it in action, um, you're never convinced, and I'm certainly never convinced. I always have it in the back of my mind that things could go wrong, but as soon as she showed up and was able to play this year, um, she's been dominant from the first inning right through today. Um, so she, she's done a great job focusing on the mound and doing what she's had to do to really prove herself. You can see Hiller's softball and baseball airing on HCAM Ed and see all the HCAM game broadcasts and highlights on our YouTube page or website HCAM.TV. Other Hillers teams clinching spots in this year's spring postseason include Hillers girls lacrosse, the boys lacrosse team, as well as girls tennis. Check our website and social media pages for postseason updates. To tell you what else is coming up on the HCAM channels, here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, May 29th at 8 p.m., Trevor Nelson joins the hosts of Hopkinton Coffee Break to discuss tick prevention around the home. There's a lot of kind of garden remedies that have been used for, you know, hundreds of years. And a lot of gardeners will plant rosemary and thyme uh, in the garden to mm. act as kind of natural repellents. This week in sports, we have the Softball versus Holliston game airing on Saturday, May 30th at 6 p.m. On Monday, June 1st at 7 p.m., Susan Bailey shares stories of life with her daughter on a new Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. 
Mother, come here, now. Oh, Amy, please, I'm busy. I'll be there in a minute. No, now. Redbird will fly away. Come now. I hurried to see Redbird. What kind of silly person would think it reasonable to miss a cardinal in the snow? On a new Physician Focus at 8.30 p.m., learn about what families and caregivers should consider when a loved one has Alzheimer's. There are resources out in the community. Um, it's often can be helpful um, if you have a family member with dementia to um, reach out either to the, your local area agency on aging. Mm -hmm. On Tuesday, June 2nd at 6.30 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On a new HCAM News Focus, on Wednesday, June 3rd at 11 a.m., relive all of the festivities that took place on Memorial Day as Hopkinton honors those who served our country. At 12.30 p.m., author William Martin gives a presentation on Abraham Lincoln and his role in the Civil War in The Lincoln Letter. Would you like to be added to the HCAM Insider Newsletter mailing list? If so, all you have to do is send me an email at Courtney at hcam.tv. If you do receive it, then please pass it along and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well. Smile.